I was just asked recently if I had a choice between a tiny home and a manufactured home, which one I would pick. It's a pretty easy decision. And hands down, without even blinking an eye, it was split second, it was a manufactured home. And as cute as tiny homes are, there are several reasons why I would consider this a better choice for most people when it comes to finding an affordable housing option. And before you get into this video, this is not about bashing tiny homes. There are fantastic little houses and they are super adorable. But there are some things that you need to understand when you're looking at tiny homes and comparing them to manufactured homes. The first one being the size and the space you get with a manufactured home. Price per square foot, when you look at most tiny homes that are decked to the nines, they're a heck of a lot more expensive than a manufactured home. Manufactured homes are under $100 per square foot. When you look at tiny homes though, they can start at 100 plus per square foot. Now I know there are some tiny home companies that do them for a lot less money, but most of those tiny home companies that do that, the tiny home itself is just a shell of the tiny home and then you have to fill in all the extra pieces that go into it. When you get a manufactured home, you're never buying the shell. It actually comes with the cabinetry. It comes with all the wood flooring. It comes with the roofing and you can get them for quite a steal. I mean, and they come very small. You can get them, you know, even one two bedroom manufactured homes. And sometimes people are really even confused when they go on to some of the manufactured lots. They think it's a tiny home, but it's actually a manufactured home. And this brings me to my next point. When you look at a tiny home and you're looking to find out specifications on how it's built, you know, what kind of codes it's brought up to. It's not brought up to any code. There is no specific code that is built for tiny homes. When you look at manufactured homes, they're built to a HUD standard. So you have some kind of certification on what the wind speed is, meaning that if a hurricane was to come through, you would know exactly what the wind speed for your manufactured home is and what it can withstand. With a tiny home, you don't have that. There's no like regulatory action that you could take against a tiny home builder if they built you a home that didn't come up to par because who knows what par is. There's no set standard basically when it comes to any kind of tiny home. There's like basic to high level except for like the interiors and what you decide that you're going to put into your tiny home. And you have to be very careful when you're picking out your tiny home builder. There's so many that take advantage of people. I even featured a guy not too long ago that was actually taking advantage of people's kindness and a lot of people put down large deposits for his tiny homes that he never never delivered on them. Never, ever, ever. And to this day, these people just still don't have their tiny homes and it doesn't look like they're ever going to get them. Now, I know you've seen lots of them on the internet, so I just want you to be very careful if you're trying to weigh out the options between buying a manufactured home or buying a tiny home from a builder. Go into all those Facebook groups that have all the tiny home members in it, because as soon as you put out a name of any tiny home builder, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that go ahead and answer your comments when it comes to that specific builder. These people have built up a whole community and they know who's doing what and what they're doing. <laughs> and they'll give you the ins and outs of it. You can be very eye-opening, especially when you're unsure of the builder that you're going to be working with. Now, when it comes to a manufactured home, most manufactured home companies have been around for years. You can find hundreds of reviews, but I'm not gonna say it's all roses when it comes to manufactured home builders. That's why it's important for you to do your investigative work. Again, there's other Facebook groups and Reddit threads when it comes to manufactured home companies that you work with. I will say this, when you're working with a specific company, the brand, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are or not going to get a good house. I've said this before and I'll say it again. A lot of times when you order a manufactured home, the company that puts in your manufactured home can cause just as much damage as anybody. And the house itself might have been great, but the person that put it in and installed it did a really crummy job. And so you think the manufacturer that made your house did a terrible job or it's a crap home and it's not. It's just the people that put it together did a really terrible job. So it's always important to have them in Expected, but you always have recourse whenever there's a problem like that. It's going to be a lot different when you have a tiny home. You don't have that kind of recourse to go back and say, look, you know, you're going to have to fix this or I'm going to get the, you know, attorney general involved. It's kind of like a buyer beware when it comes to tiny homes. You just don't have as much legs to stand on because there is no building code to go with in the first place. Now, here's another thing you need to be aware of when you're looking at tiny homes. I talk about land and buying land all the time and people always want to know, can they put their tiny home on it? Most of the time when when you're trying to find a piece of land, a lot of times they have a restriction on how much square footage you can put on a specific lot. And tiny homes usually don't meet that criteria. They're usually a lot less than 600 square feet. And if you go look at building restrictions in the area, they say that the houses have to be over X amount of square feet. In some areas it's 600 and some of them it's like 1200 square feet. And you're not gonna be able to find that of course in a tiny home because that's the defeats the purpose of a tiny home. So you're gonna have an issue with that, especially if you're looking for a vacant piece of land. The 
other thing you need to know is if you do find a piece of land that does allow for a tiny home, you're gonna have problems finding hookup. I know a lot of you that are, you know, thinking about tiny homes, you're like, well, I'm gonna live off the grid. But there's plenty of people that don't wanna live off the grid and they don't wanna have solar panels. They wanna go ahead and hook up to the internet and they wanna hook up to the electricity. And those hookups are gonna be, have to be readjusted for your tiny home. And don't forget, you're gonna have to have a well as well. You're gonna have to have a well as well. <laughs> and if you don't need a well, you're still gonna need specific hookups, you know, the city water and sewer. So just be aware of that. It's different for a tiny home than it would be for a manufactured home. Manufactured homes are made and designed to have the traditional electricity and a traditional water setup, you know, like for well or for city water. So you don't have to do any kind of special modifications when you look at manufactured homes. And just be aware, just because you have a tiny home and you're like, well, I am gonna live off the grid, your requirements in your area may not allow you to. They may require you to hook up to the local water and sewage. Matter of fact, when years ago, years, years ago, I went to a small town in Spur, Texas, and their whole requirement was you had to hook up to the local city water and sewage and electricity. You could not live completely off the grid. There was like a big thing about the composting toilets. Absolutely not. That was years ago. That's an interesting video, by the way, <laughs> if you want to check it out. The trip was very educational. Let me just put it that way. I learned a lot. At the beginning of the pandemic, I had met with a couple who had been living in a tiny home for years and had recently sold their tiny home for more money than they purchased it for. And they were able to buy their own traditional home. I'm going to tell you this, that is a very rare thing. But that also seems to be the case in people's mind when it comes to manufactured homes. And I will tell you that is not true because some people will say like Dave Ramsey, he says that living in a, to buy a manufactured home or what he calls a trailer home is like buying a car you sleep in. And I just made it up. <laughs> I want to show you somebody that's pretty darn famous. <laughs> Her name is Barbara Cochran. She actually lives in a manufactured home. Now, granted, the manufactured home is in California and on the beach side, and so she was willing to pay the price for this. But you would think that someone like Barbara would go ahead and demolish the manufactured home and put up a really big, beautiful home. But nope, absolutely not. She kept it as a manufactured home. She left it just the way it is. It had everything that she needed. Oh my gosh, it's 4.30 in the morning, and I was just invited to go on to News Nation to talk talk about Barbara Corkin's home and why she's living in a manufactured home. So I'm gonna show you a clip right now. I love me a manufactured home. I think people should definitely take a second look at them again. Well, especially <laughs> before they like turn their nose up to them. This, this mobile home Barbara Corcoran purchased was $800,000. That's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, for that area. I mean, if you look at the location though, like that, like around there, all those surrounding homes are tens of millions of dollars. Well, there you she go. Has it, like right on the beach with the view. Yeah. She was a genius. That was a smart buy. Okay, Christina Smallhorn, we're going to have your people call Barbara Corcoran's people because I maybe y'all can do a project <laughs> together. Thank you so much for being with us this morning early. There's nothing wrong with a manufactured home. Just like any piece of property when you're buying it, it has to do with the location. So if you have a good location for your manufactured home, you're gonna get more equity on it. Now, I'm not saying you wouldn't get better equity if you actually built a house on that location, but if you're comparing between a tiny home and a manufactured home, you're gonna have a lot easier time as far as resale is concerned, especially if it's a tiny home that is not a fix, meaning that it's on wheels because of the wear and tear. You're gonna get like a little, less profitability on that, you know? But when you have your manufactured home and it's in a good location, you're gonna retain that equity a lot better, especially if you take care of it, just like anything. If you don't take care of it, it's not gonna do well. If it's in a bad location, you're not gonna do well. Yes, you would make more equity if it was a house, but if this is what you can afford now, there's nothing wrong with a manufactured home, just like there's nothing wrong with a tiny home. Now, there's one other thing that you need to be aware of, especially when it comes to tiny homes, is that it is very, very difficult to get insurance on a tiny home. Super, super hard. Now with a manufactured home, since the insurance companies know that it's built to a specific kind of code, they are more aware of what a manufactured home is and how they can insure it. When it comes to tiny homes, you know, people are converting sheds, these builders that are building to unspecified codes, like they don't know what they're insuring. So it makes it much more difficult to find insurance. Now I do know that Lloyd's of London does do insurance on tiny homes, but it is very expensive 
expensive, just know that ahead of time. When it comes to manufactured homes, you're gonna have a lot easier time finding insurance and it's gonna be a lot less expensive. So if I was rounded all out, my daughter, if she was to come to me and say, should I buy a tiny home or a manufactured home? As you know, I would flat out just say, well, you're gonna buy a manufactured home and we're gonna put it on a good lot. That's what she's going to do <laughs> because her mama said so. And I want everybody to take a mom's advice. Listen to your mama, yeah. Go ahead and get yourself a manufactured home. Like all of this comes down to a lifestyle choice. If you really enjoy tiny homes and you wanna do this whole tiny house living, then do it. But just know and be aware there's so many other factors that you need to put into your mind before you decide to make this purchase. And before you make the purchase of a tiny home, please look at the smaller manufactured homes so you can compare the two and make your decision a better decision. And that was all I want for you. But if it was my daughter, I'd tell her get the manufactured home on the lot. That's what I'd say. But tell me what you would do. Let me know in the comments section below. And listen, I know you're gonna wanna investigate tiny homes and manufactured homes. And I've done several videos on them like these right here. You wanna click on them. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.